to the road. Today, we are headed to Berkeley, West Virginia to take a look at all the attractions the area has to offer, from coal mine tours to ghost towns and incredible views. Berkeley really has a surprising amount to offer. Berkeley was founded in 1838 by Alfred Berkeley and named for his father, John James Berkeley, who served as the first clerk to the House of Representatives. The city reached its peak population of over 20,000 in the 1980s, but has been in decline since that time. This pillar outside the courthouse was erected in honor of the city's founder. Now let's head up the street a little to have a look at the Berkeley exhibition, Coal Mine. This is a great place to learn about everything related to coal mining and its history in the area. In addition to the mine itself, which we will be going into shortly, they have this fantastic museum loaded with artifacts from the coal industry. Check out this fossilized tree stump. They apparently present quite a hazard when mining. This cash register and coins are from a company store. Before it was made illegal, coal miners were often paid with tokens only accepted at the company store. It made it very difficult to quit the job. Duck your head because now we are headed into the mine itself. Despite the lights they have set up, it sure gets dark in here. But what an experience. Ever since starting this trip through West Virginia, I have been wondering what it is like in a coal mine. I'm so glad to be able to see this firsthand. Let's listen to what our guide has to tell us about coal mining. This is a soil seed of coal which classifies as soft bituminous coal. On this side over here, when you see the black and the gray come together, that is 18 inches of coal. You'll be on your stomach for 12 hours in mud and water. On this side over here, that is 36 inches. If you're young and flexible, you can duck walk in that. Now, when you go into mines, you need a few things. You need to buy a shovel, a saw, a pick, an axe. You need a way to check your air. You need a way to see. This is one of the first miner's lamps. It's called a teapot. It uses coal oil and it has a wick. It is an open flame lamp. In today's mines, it is highly illegal. It was the main tool of the far boss back then. The far boss today, as well as back then, is the first man in the mines. Nobody comes in until he comes out and certifies that the mine is safe. He checks the top, the air, the timbers, the ribs, the rails. He looks the mines all over. Now, back then when he was doing that, he'd take this little lamp. And this is usually a long stick. And he'll come up in here and go across like this. Now, what he's looking for is a couple of things with his lamp. He's looking for one, methane. Methane's a gas, it rises to the top. <coughs> it works its way down. And two, he's looking for a black damp. Black damp is a coal miner's way of saying oxygen deficient air. Heavier than air with oxygen, it falls to the floor and builds up. Methane, at 5% methane, add a little oxygen and a spark, and you'll have a violent explosion. Black damp, at 12% oxygen deficiency, you will pass out and death will occur shortly thereafter. You will come across this little lamp. Little pockets of methane, he'll burn off. If he happens to be hit a big pocket, <coughs> you'll excuse me please. There should be a loud explosion. If he finds no methane, he will continue to come down because remember, white dead sends to the floor. Now he's going to watch this flame. If it grows weak, if it flickers, if it goes out, he needs to get back out of here and get out of here quick. This has been very interesting, but I'm ready to get back out into the sunlight. I'm not so sure I would have made a good coal miner. It's a bit much being underground like this. Yeah. 
After going through the mine, don't miss the coal camp they have set up. The buildings are real, and everything inside is set up true to life. Our first stop is a worker's cottage. Let's have a look inside. It's a bit cramped, but as you can see, it has everything needed to get by. Next, let's head over to the boss's house to see how different the accommodations are. Clearly, there are perks to being the boss. This is very far from the humble miner's cottage we just visited. It goes well beyond the necessities and appears to be quite luxurious for the time period. Let's have a look at the schoolhouse they have set up. Both of the kids were in the same room, the youngest grades in front brings back memories of my own school days as a kid. Finally, be sure to stop at the gift shop for a souvenir. Continuing on the road, we're headed to the new Rebel Gorge. But first, we're stopping in a ghost town called Sermond. Sermond was once a thriving town complete with hotels, banks, and department stores. Today, the town is pretty much abandoned, but it does make for a very interesting stop. If you can tell from this bridge, the town was more of a railroad stop and not really designed with much attention to automobiles. The other half of the bridge is a track that is still in use today. In fact, several trains still pass through Sermon on a daily basis. Those buildings once made up the busy commercial district of the town. Today, they are empty, but there are signs with information about what they once were and the once thriving past of this empty town. You probably won't find an ATM at the National Bank of Sermon. This old building was used to refill trains back when they ran on coal and steam. They would pour under and have their coal supply repunished. As technology changed, there was no longer a need to stop in town and things began to decline. There is a visitor center for Sermon that doubles as an Amtrak stop. Amazingly, you can still catch a train out of this ghost town. As we mentioned, the several trains still pass through daily, so be careful around the train tracks. Time to get back on the road so we can get a look at the new Rebel Gorge. Much of the park was built by the Civilian Conservation Corps during the Great Depression and it offers incredible views any time of year. If you happen to be in West Virginia during winter, make it a point to come and have a look after a fresh snowfall. The bridge and gorge are absolutely beautiful dressed in white. 
In addition to the lookouts, there is a road that takes you below the bridge for some additional views. Hopefully you enjoyed our visit to Berkeley, West Virginia. There is a lot to see here. Be sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos. Thank you for watching. See you next time.